A survival cache it's a container that's often buried, but sometimes just stashed away in a location away from one's home. Now, its purpose is pretty simple. It contains the necessary items you're gonna want if a disaster or crisis ever places you in a desperate enough situation that you have to dig it up. Now, this video will focus on a cache that's accessible to support you if you had to travel to a safer location, such as a bug out location if you have one, or along a route you may frequent daily, such as traveling to and from your house, like going to work. Think of it as a minimal bug out bag that's somewhere out in the wild and not in your closet. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the important considerations such as what type of container to use to store your items, where to store them, and what items to add along with what you should try to avoid. So let's jump in. Please consider subscribing to our newsletter by clicking on the link in the description and comment section below. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe and click the like button to help the channel grow. Survival Cache Options Ideally, you'll want to ensure that your survival cache only contains enough for just you to carry. The chances are you will be merely picking its contents and moving along to your next location. For this reason, some people bury more than one cache along a route they anticipate have to take after a crisis or disaster occurs. In my opinion, the ideal size is about the size of an ammo box, a short length of 8 to 10 inch PVC tube, something like a water brick, or even a 5 gallon bucket. The perfect survival cache is roughly the same size as a loaf of bread or two, but even a well sealed 5 gallon bucket can be a highly effective container to store your survival items. I'll use an ammo can in this video, which you can pick up at Walmart or on Amazon for roughly about $20. The smaller size limits what you can put in there, but it is, however, easier to hide, more portable, and more likely to remain concealed. Be sure to use some Vaseline to rub the seal on the inside to ensure the seal works well. Hiding your survival cache. I'll do a more in-depth video shortly about burying your cache, but let's run over the basics. Assuming you have a small survival cache that you can plan on hiding on a property you do not own, understand that you may be breaking laws in doing so. If it's not land you own, it would be ill-advised to store in your cache any firearms or ammo of any kind, but that's a decision you have to make. Also, I would not store any identification or documentation of any kind. As a general guideline, do not damage property and stay away from restricted areas. A fellow prepper in your mutual assistance group may offer up an area where you can put your survival cache. Your container should be marked as to what it is on the container's exterior along with the date it was buried. Merely writing or etching on it emergency kit will prevent someone from thinking it's dangerous if it's discovered. Some may disagree with this, but an unopened container of unknown origin is likely to be treated as a potential ordinance. This can draw multiple law enforcement agencies' attention and could result in further investigations that may eventually link you back to the cache. Carefully think about where you want to place your survival cache. It should be along an emergency route you think you may have to take one day or one you frequent. When it comes to hiding your survival cache, the most common method is to bury it. If you do this, place an identifiable rock directly over the spot or measure precisely from two different trees or points so you'll know right where it is. Make sure that you will be able to find it again, even if natural disasters have severely altered the landscape. While recording GPS coordinates may be ideal, if you don't have a GPS device when attempting to recover the cache, you may find it hard to recover. Ensure there is at least a foot of dirt over it to be less acceptable to the elements. You can expect that the ground temperature around your survival cache may fluctuate from cool to freezing. Burying it, however, is just one method. I've known people to weigh it down and submerge it among rocks and creeks. Small survival caches can be affixed to tree limbs and high trees. Some people may put them under sidewalks near their houses. The rebar on the sidewalk towards metal detectors, and the sidewalk is not too difficult to lift or dig under. Also, if you're worried about people using metal detectors, you may consider burying it next to a metal fence post or by adding bolts and nuts above it and burying your cache a foot or two under those. This way, after the person discovers these worthless decoys, they may not be incentivized to dig further. Be creative with where you hide your survival cache, but make sure that your location will not be discovered. Also, make sure that you'll be able to find it again, even if natural disasters have severely altered the landscape. Finally, make sure your survival cache is both airtight and watertight, which we'll cover momentarily. What to include? 
Different survival caches may contain various items and it's always hard to do these types of videos as everyone has different variables they're gonna face in a potential bug out scenario. I live in a very moderate climate that doesn't fluctuate wildly like somewhere that may experience extreme cold or heat. So what I pack into my survival cache will be unique to my situation. Adjust according to your specific needs. Here, I'll provide you a framework that can guide you instead of a rigid list of finding what exactly you should buy. I'll follow Dave Canterbury's 10 C's I recently discussed in a video plus a few other items. I'll post links in the description and comments section below to all the items that we cover. Number one, cover. A tarp or a rain poncho that can double over as a shelter is ideal. Number two, cutting. A simple fixed blade knife will suffice. Number three, combustion. I'd recommend either matches or a ferro rod. While I typically prefer something like a Bic lighter, I prefer an option that won't potentially leak the fuel out. Number four, container. I personally prefer stainless steel water bottles that can be heated over an open flame. Number five, cordage. Having the ability to strap or tie items down will be useful. Number six, cotton bandana. These have many applications such as covering for your head, making a sling, or for pre-filtering water. Number seven, compass. Being able to navigate and having a clear direction, especially if traveling on foot, will be so important. In addition, you may want to consider a map of your local area. Number eight, communication. Typically, I recommend a two-way radio, but I wouldn't want to store one of these in extreme conditions. Instead, having a signaling mirror could be very useful. Number nine, candle. Normally, I have a flashlight of some type for the C item, but exposing the batteries to extreme weather conditions could destroy it. Instead, having an actual candle would be beneficial. This could also include glow sticks. Cargo tape. I personally recommend Gorilla Tape. Number 11, cash. Having cold, hard cash could be very important as stores may no longer be able to process credit cards if the grid is down. Number 12, chow. I prefer options that are resistant to heat and have a long lifespan. Number 13, coffee. A solid source of energy. Obviously, it does require heating up water, so you may consider other alternatives for energy, such as the Zipfizz energy supplements that you can add directly to water. Number 14, medical kit. A basic kit with bandages or gauze or some other miscellaneous items could be extremely beneficial to have. Number 15, emergency blanket. They're small, but they could come in handy to allow you to at least survive the elements. Number 16, write in the rain pencil and notepad. These are useful if you have to leave a note for someone else. Number 17, water filter. A Sawyer mini water filter. These are small, compact, and can process quite a lot of water. Number 18, deck of cards. If there's room in your survival cache, consider placing a deck of cards in there. You may wish for the entertainment. Number 19, water. Depending on your location and situation, water may not be readily available. For me, I live in a dry location, so having a source of water on standby would be valuable. I would recommend, however, setting up a separate container to store the water in case any of the water leaks. If you're concerned about animals smelling the food and digging up the cache, you might want to consider adding the food into a vacuum seal bag or a mylar bag, vacuuming it out, and then wiping or spraying it with bleach. This would also be helpful to prevent your survival cache from becoming a petri dish for mold if any moisture should get in. You may want to also consider putting the different items that are sensitive to moisture in a vacuum seal bag and adding a moisture absorbing silica gel pack. You can pick these up on Amazon for relatively cheap. D-E-A-T-H. When deciding what to put in your survival cache, remember the acronym DEATH. If one of your items becomes tainted, it can ruin your entire cache and you will not likely survive if it was your only chance. DEATH. D for will the item deteriorate over time? E for will the item evaporate or leak moisture of any kind? Even canned goods have a shelf life and one stored improperly could explode botulism soup all over your other items one day. A is for anaerobic, in that will your items give off gases over time? T is for toxic, will your items become toxic over time? Some medicines don't just become less effective over time, they can become toxic. And H for heat, will your item be susceptible to temperature extremes over an extended period? Death, deteriorate, evaporate, anaerobic, toxic, heat. If you remember these things as you place the items into your survival cache, you'll be more assured that they will be there, ready for you for many years into the future should you need them. Survival caches come in many sizes, and as you can see, they can contain a variety of items. Now, I've tried to give you the basics, the essentials, and items I also would not recommend. 
your survival kit may be different, but if you follow the outline that we detailed in this video, you can customize and scale up your own kit based upon your own needs. In an upcoming video, we're gonna discuss more about where you would actually wanna bury it and how. I'll have an exciting way for you to participate in that, so you'll wanna to subscribe to the channel to know when that video is released. If you found this video informative and helpful, please click that thumbs up icon. It's a little thing, but it helps us build our prepping community. I'd love to hear if you have any survival caches out there somewhere and what you have in it. Let us all know in the comments below. I read many of the comments and I try to respond to them and that's typically within the first hour of releasing the video. I can notify you when other videos become available if you subscribe to this channel. As always, please stay safe out there.